Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel, and I'm now answering question number five from the um, June 2019 International A Level Mechanics M1 paper um, from Edexcel. This question or uh, this paper is not the GCE paper for which there is another paper in June 2019 as well. This is the IAL paper. Okay, it says two forces, F1 and F2, act on a particle. The resultant of the two forces is R. Okay, so what that means is we can say F1 plus F2 is, sorry, plus F2 is equal to R. And two um, forces are added together. The resultant is found by, you know, that's, that's how you find the result, adding them together. It says, given that R has the same direction as 3I minus 2J, so that means R is equal to, not it's not equal to 3I minus 2J, it's equal to some constant times 3I minus 2J. So I've got to put, put a K to represent that constant. Uh, so it's equal to some constant times 3I minus 2J. It has the same direction, means it's parallel. Vectors which are parallel to each other are not equal to each other, but they're equal to some multiple of each other. Okay, so R equals K times 3I minus 2J. I like to express my vectors in this form of column vectors. I find it much easier and neater when I'm doing my calculations. All right, then it says, find the size of the angle between R and the vector J. Okay, first of all, the vector J. The vector J is a unit vector, which is going vertically upwards. That's a, that's a vector J. So J is in this direction. Okay, it's in this direction. We don't need to know um, the magnitude of R to ca calculate this question because what we need to know is its direction. And this is enough for us to know its direction. Now, the direction is the same direction as 3i minus 2j. Okay, 3i minus 2j. Now, 3i minus 2j is basically something like this. Three units to the right and two units down. So it's going to go in the same direction as something like this. Three to the right and two down. I'm just making a rough sketch here. So it's going to have this type of... Um, one second three to the right and two down. It's going to have this type of, oops, let me do this with another line. Okay, so this will be the direction of R. This is not this is not the magnitude of R, it's the direction. Three to the right and two down. Okay, what we need to find is the direct, the angle between the J and this vector, okay, which is the angle all the way from there to there. That's the angle we need to find. Well, I know that this part of the angle is 90 degrees. We know that because this is, J is north and this was three units. This is like three I and that's north. So that's, oh, not north, sorry. That's a vertical and that's horizontal. We're not talking about north and east here. But J is going uh, vertically upwards and I is going to the right positively. So that's going to be um, 90 degrees. Now this angle here plus this 90 degrees is going to give me what we're looking for which is the whole angle. So if I find the angle over here and add it to 90, I've got what I need. So to find theta, we can say that this is I, this is, you know, J in this direction. They're, they're perpendicular to each other. So this is a, a right angle triangle. So I can say that the tangent of this angle theta is equal to the opposite over the adjacent, which is two thirds. So I can use trigonometry to find theta. Theta is inverse tan of two thirds. So I do inverse tangent of two thirds. And that will give me the angle theta, which I've marked there, which is 33.690, 33.690. I haven't rounded it yet, leave it like that. And so that we can say that the angle that we're looking for, the angle between um, R and the vector J is equal to 90 degrees plus 33.690 degrees that's the angle we're looking for so we take the angle that we found and we add 90 to it and that will give us 123.690 123.690 now they haven't told us how to round it now angles should always be rounded um, to the nearest 
uh, one decimal place, so it's 123.7 degrees. That's how we're going to round our answer in the end. And there's the answer here. They didn't say in degrees or radians, but you know, in these, in these we normally use degrees, especially in uh, M1. So we'll use degrees and we round it to one decimal place, as degrees should be rounded to unless otherwise stated. So there's the answer to part A. Now for part B it says given that F1 equals AI plus 3J and F2 equals minus 4I plus BJ Newtons, show that 2A plus 3B plus 1 equals 0. Okay, now as I'm stated above, we know that F1 plus F2, if I add them together, I get the resultant vector. Okay, and we know that the, the, the resultant vector, we've called it K times 3 minus 2. Okay, some constant times 3 minus 2, because this is in the same direction as 3I minus 2J. All right. So then I can make a little equation from this because if I, I know that this vector plus this vector equals that vector. So let's write them as column vectors to make life easy. So you have A plus 3, that's A3, AI plus 3J. If I add to that the vector F2, which is minus 4I plus BJ, so it's minus 4 and B, that's equal to the vector R, which is, this is K times 3. Let me just expand, that's 3K and minus 2k. Now what I can do is from here I can make a, um, a set of equations from this because I know that the i components if this if this is equal to that if these two sides are equal to each other then we can say that the i components on this side and the i components on that side must be exactly the same because these two are equal. All right? So I can say that a minus 4 is the same as 3k that's from the i components and from the j components i can say that 3 plus b 3 plus b is exactly the same as minus 2k they must be the same now what we have to show has no k in it just a and b so basically what we should think about here is eliminating the case so just a classical question of you know using simultaneous equations if i make the k's have the same coefficient or you know coefficients that i can uh, eliminate then i'll be able to deal with it so if i multiply if i take equation call this equation one and two if i multiply equation one by two and equation two by three that will become 6k and that will become negative 6k and i'll be able to eliminate them so let's do that let's multiply all of equation one by two that will give me 2a minus eight equals 6k and all of this by um, 3, that gives me 9, plus 3b is equal to negative 6k. Now, for me to eliminate the k's, I need to add these two equations together. I need to add them. If I add them, I have 2a plus 9 minus 8 plus 3b is equal to 6k plus minus 6k, 0, which is what we wanted. So now we can see we've got 2a plus 3b, 9 minus 8 plus 1 equals 0, which is exactly what we had to show. 2a plus 3b plus 1 equals 0. 2a plus 3b plus 1 equals 0. That's as required. And there's the answer to part b of question number 5 Okay, from this. So basically, uh, for part a, we have to use the directions of j and r to find the angle between them. For part b, we use the fact that the resultant vector is a sum of the two vectors f1 and f2 and the resultant vector is some multiple of, th of 3 minus 2 because it's parallel to it so we can set up a pair of equations compare the i and j components and we get our final answer so there's the answer to question part a and b of question 5 uh, from this paper other questions from this particular paper you will find collected together in the playlist that should appear in this the link for which will be in this region here other questions from the uh, this topic of vectors in m1 can be found in the playlist that should appear in this region over here you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on the link that will appear over here and in the description you'll find links to other material that i have for a level and also for igcse um, thank you for watching and see you soon